All right, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're, we're we've gone to uh, the channel Pine Creek, and um, I I used to listen to a lot of Pine Creek. I enjoyed his content. Yes, Pine Creek is an atheist, but he's a a different kind of atheist. He's a conservative atheist at that, but I enjoy his content. He he makes good arguments politically and pretty much religiously. Um, so let's uh, let's look into this video, this one right here. This one is called the brain rot of some of the left on immigration. So I'm interested to hear uh, Pine Creek's view on this and whoever he's talking to, their view on it. So let's get right into it. Do you think the United States is a better country than Mexico? No. Should there be limits for how many people? So right off the bat, I disagree with this guy. <laughs> right off the bat. It's obvious to me uh, as an American, I, I, I think that the United States is better than Mexico. There's an influx of, of, of huge numbers of people coming into America from Mexico. Why are they not? Why are they not staying there? Uh, I've worked with lots and lots and lots of Mexicans in the construction industry. Uh, still today, work with Mexicans in the in the. It, it, they they will plainly, blatantly tell you that economically it's 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 a better place. Uh, it's uh, the government helps them in a in a way that it's better than their own country. So. Uh, they they come here to make plenty of money to go back to help. I've been told this. They go come here, to make money, to make Mexico better. Okay, if Mexico was great, they'd never left Mexico to come here. So let's go. People come in the country. Yes or no? In your opinion, there are the, those are already in place. Uh, no, and I don't. I, I think that free flow borders are better. Okay, so so your answer is no. There should be no limits to how many people can come into the country. Is that your answer? Possibly, yeah. Possibly, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now imagine you're a smart guy. You can use your imagination. Imagine 100 million people want to come into the United States. Question. Do you think this is a good thing, bad thing, or neutral? Over, let's neutral. say, over, let's say, a period of uh, I don't know, two to three years. Neutral. Neutral. Question. Yeah. Question. Do you think that would put a strain on our infrastructure, like hospitals and schools? Yes or no? Lean yes, lean no. Yeah. Yes, it could. It could. So why do you say neutral when you admit that it can cause stress on things like schools and hospitals? Just because it causes stress doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. Okay. Do you think it's bad if if there's not enough schools for kids and not enough hospitals for sick people? Do you think that's bad? What? Do you think it's bad if there's not enough schools to educate children and not enough hospitals to take care of the sick? Yes, that could be bad, but <laughs> we already have that in late stage capitalism, right? So, okay, you just admitted, yes, that's bad, or you said could be bad. Now, if, be bad. if uh, having an unlimited number of immigrants come in and it causes a strain on hospitals and schools, which you admitted that could be bad, then you would have to admit that having unlimited number of immigrants could be bad, correct? Could be. There you go. Progress. Is it? Is it bad? Is, you you were voting for a guy that says that it definitely is bad. That could be. What's definitely bad? Those. 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 Are, oh, so it's, it's definitely bad in your view. Well, I I think yes. Wouldn't it be better to have? <laughs> it is definitely bad. It's it's bad. Have an orderly way to have immigrants come in and not and have a cap
if you're trying to stress test it based on uh, logistics in the country, yeah, it could be. Yes, that's. Um, I'm a practical guy, so I'm talking about logistics here. If we yeah. if we were looking at what is best for a country, is it better to have someone who is financially independent come into our country or someone who's financially dependent to come into our country? If you had to choose one or the other, we've got two people at the border. One is financially independent. One is financially dependent, meaning they need food stamps, they need welfare for for maybe even over a year. Which is better for our country? People, they can't get those benefits here. Which the, this this joker just said, people can't get those benefits here. What planet is this clown on? There's video, doc, showing documents showing. They that that cards have been passed out from the federal government, not just states, from the federal government for these immigrants coming across the border. For this guy to deny that is absurd. And I don't know if Pine Creek is going to call him out on it. He should, because this is a complete lie. It's making me sense. Which is better for our country? Someone who's financially independent. It's, it's, it's a it's a false. Type. The, the people that are coming in that you claim that have the have the need for this, they can't come in. Oh, well, they can come in, but they can't get those benefits. Bullshit. They're not citizens. Oh, right? so that we they, so they, they, they just die of hunger. No, they end up relying on their own hard work and maybe charities, private charities. Oh, so the government doesn't provide any assistance. Some governments might, like local states or maybe um, city, you know, city charities okay. or something like so that. Okay. So when a when a the federal the federal government doesn't provide, if somebody crosses over, the federal government doesn't pro automatically provide okay. somebody just passed into the United States. That is a complete lie. Go listen. If you're watching this and you get to this point, look it up. There's people will literally have videotaped these immigrants, they've shown their documents on the camera from the government. Who do you think is paying for all that? Sure, there are, there are probably some states are dishing it, like New York and stuff like that, dishing in some money on it. But at the same time, the government has got started the turning of the wheel. What do you think they're, they, they how do you think they eat? Who you, Who do you think when it comes down to when they go get health care and when they these kids go into the school, yeah, it has to do with the state, but it also has to do with federal. So for this guy to say this is complete, yeah, brain rot. So, so someone who's financially dependent comes across, they are dependent on help from local charities and local governments, correct? Well, oh, you have a problem with somebody coming over who wants to earn a wage? Lean yes, lean no. Would you class it? When someone comes over who has no money and has, I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't think that that's a, I don't think that that's a particularly good reason to determine whether or not they're going to be a citizen. Okay, so here's my question for you, Jefferson, and these are very uncomfortable questions for I think people from your side of the aisle to answer because it's a they're, they're not they're superficial because it's a it's a it's a moral dilemma type question. So the question is this. It, it's, it, well, it's a moral dilemma if you own. You, so you're saying the only people that you want to allow in easily are people who are already wealthy. This is my question to you. If they're, okay, let me ask you something. If they're already wealthy, what do they want to do here? Maybe they love Disneyland and they want to move close to Disneyland. I don't know. But here's my question you to you. Well. Jefferson, okay. here's my question to you. We got two people at the border and you are in charge. Okay. Of who gets in, and only one person can come in. Now, one person has, let's say, five million dollars in their bank account. The other person has zero in their bank account, and you don't know anything else at this point. We're going to do baby steps, one at a time. That's all you know at this point. And I ask you, where are you leaning? Who are you going to let in? The person with five million, or the person with zero? Person with zero. I don't know where that five million came from. Jesus Christ. They don't know where the five million came from. So you'd rather take a chance on the one with zero dollars. 
it's unbelievable. It, we don't know where that five million dollars come from in their bank account. There, you, you, this guy, these people are willing to investigate people with money. People have money in their bank account, but where's the background check for the guy with zero dollars? You just gonna let him in? No, no background, no check, no see what's going on. Why are they coming here? None of that. Just come on across the border. You have zero dollars. But if a guy has five million dollars in his bank account, no, 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 we must investigate. This guy's an idiot. And you're going to need a forensic account okay. to figure out how that person is so wealthy. And what, okay. what are they doing? Right okay, across the board? Jefferson, why would you let in the person with zero? What difference does it make? Why would you let in the person with zero versus five million? What's your reasoning? If they're showing up here to what? Try to get a job? You don't know. You don't know yet. All we know at this point is we got two immigrants. One has one, one has five million dollars and one has zero. Right. That's all. Which one can do the most damage to the economy? The one with zero dollars. I would let in the one with zero dollars because I can't bet where the one where the five million dollars on the other person came from. What? Okay. So okay. So let me. Account. I want to make sure I'm understanding you correctly. You're you're suspicious of where that five million dollars came from. So therefore, you would let in the person who you're has not. zero. In your thought experiment, you're not suspicious as to why somebody with $5 million is trying to cross the border in the same way that somebody with Okay, $5 okay. Is. So you answered my question. You said you're suspicious of where that money came from. So you would take the person with zero money. Okay. okay. So now, let, now I'm going to give you more information. The person with the $5 million uh, earned it legally through, I don't know, starting a business. Now, who are you going to let in? And I can determine I can determine this when they're crossing the border. This is a thought experiment, Jefferson. You're a smart guy. You can your entertain thought, thought experiments. Your, your thought your thought experiment is starting to break down in terms of like allowing people to cross, right? If I'm if I'm trying to determine whether or not somebody's a security risk or not, the amount of money that they have in their bank account is not necessarily an indication of whether or not they're a threat to the country, one way or the other. So it's already a bad thought experiment. Okay. <laughs> You know that the five million, I'm, the, I'm, I'm, Jefferson. You know the five million was earned legally. Now, who would you let in? I know that. In this thought experiment, okay, you know so this. I, in this thought experiment, uh, I was so, you know this. It's a fact. The, the person with, with the, the person with no money easily. The person with five million, maybe I'd let them in too. Okay, I can only pick one. You can only pick one, Jefferson. Who are you going to let in? The person with zero dollars or the person with five million? The the person with zero dollars. Why? Because What's your reasoning? Has, the person with five million dollars has a lot more, a lot more options than the person with none. Ah, okay. But you you missed very good. I, I really, really appreciate your answer because I think it's an honest answer. You're looking at it from the perspective of the person with zero dollars. But this thought experiment is what is best yeah. for our country, not what is best for them. This is why I said this is a moral dilemma. So let me why would it be, let, why would, hang on. Why would, why would it be better for us to uh, you've got somebody that's coming from another country that earned five million dollars and another person that's showing up from the same country with no dollars? Why is it better for our country if that person like let's to keep this in like Trump terms? Where did that person get those five million dollars from in their weird economy? I already told so you they started their own business legally. And you can just determine that. Right there at the border. Yes, in this thought experiment, we know this. So let me ask you again: okay. What is best? So you want to bring that, Jefferson? What is best for? Me, what is? But why but are you resisting so much? This. No, I just want to ask you this: Are 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 you the kind of guy that's in favor of like say like you know? I think you can buy your citizenship in St. Kitts for two hundred and fifty grand. I think you can buy citizenship in New Zealand for five million. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay. So so money makes rights happen if you're sometimes yeah yeah you can to me it's okay. it's not a not a constitutional right you're buying but it's the right to live in this country yeah there used to even be no and like in, in, in new zealand you are actually buying citizenship so you are then protected by their constitution you are buying constitutional protections for five million dollars. yeah if you're buying citizenship yeah then fine but so I answered. So you're okay you, with that. Yeah, I'm okay with that. So now Jefferson, now I you see how quickly and easily I answered your question. Can you do the same for me? 
what is best for the country of the United States to let the person in with who has $5 million, who's financially independent, and it, they got their $5 million legally by starting their own business, or the person with zero dollars? Who would, and you can only let in one. Who are you going to let in? What is best for our country? I'm still, still going to let in the one. The one that's coming in with zero dollars is a driver, right? Is a driver? Striver. Right? They're going to be striving to make something ah. for themselves. They're so that's so stupid. What a dumb answer. The person with zero dollars is striving for something. Well, they didn't strive for shit in their own country. They're coming in with zero dollars. It's pretty obvious the person that has five million in their bank account has been working their ass off, striving for better things and coming into the country with five million dollars probably to invest into into the country. This is a stupid comp this th that answer was terrible. They're gonna okay. put themselves to work. So you're you're assuming that people with zero dollars will strive and work harder than someone with five million dollars who started their, got who got their five million from starting their own business? Yes, I would. I, I mean, it's, it, I mean, if you're if you're putting me in a in a snap decision kind of thing, yeah, I'm going to let the person have a zero in their bank account rather than the person. Okay, what if I told you? Also, because it's going to take longer to figure out where that five million came from. What if your what if I told you that the that they have equal um, Gumption, striving. Who are you going to let in? What's the point of this thought experiment if I know that? The point of this thought experiment is to see why exactly you view. There's no, there's no way that I could know that, right? Like, <laughs> you sound like a Christian this, who fights back so hard on this, thought experiments. This this thought experiment has completely broken down. No, it's completely broken down. There's no reason to determine either entry or citizenship based on either of these well, let's do something simpler any of these qualities I, I, right let's do something that that might be easier for you we got two people at the border one has a contagious disease and one doesn't who are you going to let in the person without the disease i agree so that was very Although, that was very easy for you to it, answer if you have a pandemic going, you wouldn't even allow that person in either. Okay, let's uh, let's see. If, let's get a little bit tougher. We got two people at the border. One is highly, highly skilled in a job that's very, very needed in the United States. The other one has no skills or very low skills. Who are you going to let in? The high school one. Excellent. We're agreed there. Um, we got two people at the border. One who has a history of of um committing crimes the other person has a clear record and we know both histories who are you going to let in one with a clear clear record very good so i agree on that one now now let me ask you this is it better to know all these criteria before someone crosses mm. the u.s mexico border yes before they cross is it better to know these things than not Probably, yeah. Excellent. I agree. So, but do they not? So, if it is better to know these criteria before they even cross that line in the sand, wouldn't it be best to have some type of system, as no system is perfect, where we do not let anyone cross that line in the sand until we know the answers to those questions? No. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's only common sense. This, this is where I get confused with these people. It's, it's common sense that you should know as much as you can about a person before they come across the border. That's common sense. What, a, what, a, what an idiot. Okay, that's where we have a disagreement. That's where we have a disagreement. That doesn't follow because they're not here permanently. We're, There's a difference between somebody, somebody coming in and staying permanently. Those the criteria that you mentioned before; those count. They're skilled. They don't have a criminal record. They're not contagious, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Those things count in terms of determining whether they can stay here permanently. The idea of them crossing over the border doesn't matter. 
right? Because you're obviously going to have tourist flows and things like that, or you have people in re in refugee crises that are coming over and claiming asylum. So those people aren't necessarily going to stay here. In this, so those optics the, are different. This is another example of you talking so much. Given the thought experiment, is it better to know who's coming? In? How, did I, how did I talk too much? Given this thought experiment, is it better to know who's coming into the country for residency or not? Is it better to know these things or not? It's, it's better. It's better. And that's the ideal. Yeah. Okay. I, I, Wait, but I agree. I mean, hang on. Coming in for what? Coming in to stay? Yes. I said that I mean, twice. Visit? Okay. But that's the problem. The fact that people are crossing the border and like right wing news shows that, and it's a scary thing. People just like run across the border. Most of those people are caught and, and tracked. They end up getting deported later on. So it's not, it, that's not a big deal. Later on? Yeah, they end up getting caught, detained, and then sent back to their home country. Okay, let me ask you this. What is better, to let someone go across our border, get caught, and then deported later, or not let them cross to begin with? Which is better? Before we get into that, that's, that's a lie. There was a time when people would cross the border, get caught, and get sent back. That no longer happens. Has this person not noticed that hotels have been taken over in New York? And these illegals, immigrants, are in these hotels. Has this person not watched the news? And I'm not talking about Fox News. I'm talking about CNN and all these others. Where in Chicago, the people in Chicago are pissed off because in Chicago, they've taken entire schools and turned them into immigration camps where they, they provide housing in these in these schools and yes they get food and and they get a card where they have a certain amount of money per month and this person you know, if it if they, if they were coming to this country and get caught everybody in that school or in those motels hotels or whatever you want to call them would be going being deported when they cross the border and they're put on these buses to be shipped out all over the country, are they not caught at that moment? It's so idiotic. For that individual, don't. Huh? I I really I'm, I'm gonna be honest about this. I, I don't think that it makes a difference. Uh, <laughs> you don't think it makes a difference? Do you think that it makes a difference at that first? They they come across, they get tagged. Law enforcement knows who they are. They get picked up. They get deported. As opposed to they just. So do you want a, a a wall from San Diego to Texas that's just sky high? It doesn't necessarily they could never they can never physically get through. Okay, Jefferson, let's say um I was God, okay? With uh I, let's pretend I'm an omnipotent god that I could put up a wall that was 100% effective. Would you admit that that would be better in preventing someone from from coming in rather than coming in, having to catch them and then deport them? And then feeding them while they're here during that old time. Do you agree that that would be who's better? Feed, who's feeding Doug? Who's feeding them? The country. Who? The country. The people in the country. Yeah, they're private charities or local governments. So the fact that these people get the the fact that they get private. Can you answer my question? Is, uh, I, no, I would. That, that doesn't make any sense. If you're not, if you're an omniscient, you can't God, even admit you know. that it is better to not have them come in in the first place than than catch them and then deport them. You can't even admit that. If you're an omniscient God, you already know who they are. Oh. So you can grab them and send them. Why would you need a Why would you need a wall? Okay, thanks for coming on, Joe. You know who's here legally or illegally. This is why people are voting right, because they listen to guys like you and they just go, "What is wrong with this guy?" What are you, you do? Do you think that the immigration issue that's currently happening, around like the resistance to these thought experiments, you can just see it. Where I give him everything he wants, 
I am God. I got a seal proof wall. What is better to prevent this guy that you're going to deport later anyhow from even crossing in the first place or letting him cross and going through the effort of finding and the catching and the deporting, which is better to prevent that from happening or to let it happen than do it. All right. That's it. So <clears throat> I like that, you know, Pine Creek uses the always using thought experiments. It, it comes to, uh, political issues, it comes to moral issues, it comes to theist, atheists, whatever, it doesn't matter. Muslims, it doesn't matter. He's always using thought experiments. And he, you know, th this guy he's talking to in this video is, you can see, just trying to dodge all the stuff. And, and it, you know, this is the, this is, and Pine Creek is right. This is why so many people are voting this go round, leaning right wing over the left at, right now, uh, downplaying uh, the the crisis at our border. This person has lost their mind if they think that our government is not putting out money for these immigrants. It's absurd. I enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more uh, videos like this, let me know in the comments. I appreciate you watching. Till next time, see ya.